Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you know, I am new to this YouTube thing, and as I was editing the video, I made the mistake of deleting the first half of the video. Yeah! But a small portion of the first half of me constructing a base, so I pulled a video from TikTok, slowed it down, and I'm going to try to describe it the best way I possibly can. If it is not clear to you, feel free to leave a comment below, and I will answer any and all questions. If necessary, I will redo the base and film it again in a separate video. Okay, let's get started. All material, tools, and measurements are in the description below along with links to the items. First, I went around three parts of my base with wood glue. Then I lined my two sides and front pieces of wood along the edge and drilled them to my baseboard. It should look just like the picture at the bottom of the screen to the left hand side. Again, if it's not clear, just let me know in the comments. Now we're going to go on to the next step. Next, I coated the entire inside of the base with spray adhesive and laid my batting over it. Making sure to tuck the batting in the corners for the perfect fit. Next, I laid my fabric over the batting. To make sure the fabric is stabilized and fit perfectly to the base, I went around the base corners with staples using my staple gun. The next part is part of the footage that is missing, so I will be as descriptive as possible. Once I went around the entire parameter of the inside of my base with the staples, I did flip the board over and pulled the fabric tightly as possible and stapled the parameters on the outside. A good example of this is in my previous video of the footstool. Once I secured the fabric to the back of my base, I went around it, trimming away the excess fabric. I added more staples as I trimmed the fabric in the spots that wasn't secured. Again, guys, this is the back of the base. Pull the fabric tightly as possible, staple it down, and trim away any excess fabric. Now I'm setting that aside and moving on to my backboard. So here I'm measuring four inches up because remember the foam is shorter than the backboard, but I put the exact measurements in the description below so that you don't have to measure this part. To prep the board for the foam, I'm coating the baseboard with spray adhesive. Next I'm laying my foam. I'm using scrap foam I had around the house left over from my bed set project. Video for that coming soon but you would use a whole piece of foam. Again, the measurements and link are in the description below. Now I'm laying the batting over the foam. And next, my fabric. Now it's time to start the tufting. Now for my measurements, I measure three inches from the outer parameter to start. three inches between button holes going downward, and eight inches between button holes going across. Now, I like to lay my washes out first. This gives me an overall idea of how the patterns will look so that I can adjust the washers if they appear uneven or too close together. Now I'm taking my 3 4 of an inch wood screws and drilling them through the hole of the washer. Now as I'm moving on to the next one, I'm making sure to pull the fabric tightly as possible. Now at the bottom where I left that four inch space, I'm going to staple across right underneath where the foam stops. Now I'm going to start on the back of the board. I'm pulling the fabric tightly and stapling the fabric down as I go along just like I did earlier to the baseboard. And trimming away any excess fabric. Mm -hmm. 
To close it off, I am coating the entire back board with spray adhesive, laying my felt over it and securing the felt with staples. Time to apply the buttons. For this project, I decided to use the rhinestone flat back buttons. As you can see, they fit perfectly into the hole where my washers are. Any buttons are fine, just make sure that they are one inch and flat back without anything sticking out. To apply mine, I use E6000 glue in the middle because it's more of a permanent adhesive. But I go around the outside of it with a hot glue gun because the E6000 glue takes more time to dry and the glue gun sticks dry instantly. So that holds it in place until the E6000 glue is done drying. So again, first I apply the E6000 glue in the middle, the hot glue gun around the outside, and then I apply the button. So since I have longer nails in this project, it's pretty hard to push the button down. So I'm going to take the back of a screwdriver to put pressure on the button. And I repeat this step for all of the buttonholes. Now the backboard is complete. Now it's time to attach the backboard to the baseboard. Here I am lining up the backboard to the baseboard on the side where we did not apply the wood. Here I'm going to get my one inch screws and drill three of them through the backboard on each side where the wood is located on the baseboard. I did this on both sides. Now I'm going to close off the bottom. This is actually a step I could have did when I completed the bottom earlier, but I'm going to do it now. And to close it off, I coated the bottom with spray adhesive, applied my 24 by 24 felt piece, and stapled it around the parameters to secure it to the board. Now the puppy bed is complete. I'm going to show you how I applied the name on this particular bed. I would typically use a Cricut machine and a heat press, but my Cricut machine was down at this time, so I used rhinestones and hot glue. First, I aligned my letters going across one inch from the bottom. Next, I took each letter, applied hot glue to it, and glued it down. Now that's all finished up. We only have one last step and that is our pillowcase. 
since we are using a 24 by 24 pillow insert, we are going to cut two 24 by 24 pieces of fabric and one nine by 24 piece of fabric. Once I cut my first 24 by 24 piece of fabric, I'm going to use that piece as a pattern to cut my next piece because remember you need two 24 by 24 pieces of fabric. Here, I just decided to cut my nine by 24 inch piece of fabric at the same time. Again, you should have three pieces of fabric, two 24 by 24 pieces and one nine by 24 inch piece of fabric. Now you're gonna take one of your 24 by 24 pieces of fabric and your nine by 24 piece of fabric and do a roll hem on the 24 inch long side. Just one side though. I am pinning down one side of the 24 by 24 inch of fabric to prepare it to sew it down. Now that is all pinned down, I'm going to run it through my sewing machine. If you do not know how to sew, it's okay. Just use any 24 by 24 inch pillow. Now, if you would like a more elaborate and more detailed video on how to make a pillowcase, just comment below. Now the 124 by 24 piece of fabric should have a clean rolled hem like this. Now I'm going to follow the exact same steps for my 9 by 24 inch piece of fabric. Making sure it's on the 24 inch long side. Now I'm not pinning the hem first this time. I'm rolling the hem as I go along because it's faster for me. But do what's best for you. Now I'm going to take the 24 by 24 piece of fabric that I did not sew and lay it face up. And lay the 24 by 24 piece of fabric that I did sew face down over it, making sure the left side corners are lined up. Using stick pins to secure the fabric together. Now I'm taking my nine by 24 inch fabric and laying it face down on the other end with the finished hem facing the inside and pinning down the right side corners. Now I'm going to sew around the entire parameter using a half inch seam allowance. Again, if you would like a more elaborate and detailed video of how to make the pillowcase, please, please like this video and comment below. Now I'm gonna flip the pillowcase right side out and insert my pillow. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see how your project turns out. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you soon.